Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and children of all ages, you are now tuned in to Investor Show. As always, this is your gracious host, the Prince of Investing, coming to you guys and girls live all the way from the beautiful state of Denver, Colorado. Making sure I adjusted my microphone there a little bit because people have told me that, hey, sometimes it covers up your halfway of your face. So anyway, guys and girls, I'm live here today. So as you can see, today's topic, we're going to be talking about how earnings affect the stock market. Now, when people say earnings, they want to know what are earnings, uh, what is earnings season, what is, you know, how, what does that mean? How can I prepare for it? How does that make me as a better investor? So don't worry about it. That's what we're here for on this show. So first, let's start off. What are earnings in general before we even get into what they do? So the first thing is earnings are um, pretty much what companies is what rules the stock market, how much money somebody makes. So for prime example, it all depends on how much money does Walmart make, right? So a publicly traded company seeks to take money from the public, meaning that they can take money from everyday people. When you go out and you purchase a stock or you purchase a uh, bond, you are giving your money to a particular company in hopes that that company will take your money, do great things with it, and you know make a return on investment. Now, it's a great thing for a company on one side of the hand, you have on one side of the coin, you have a company that's taking in money that they're going to turn around and use to turn a profit. On the flip side of that, as the investor, you get to own a piece of major companies like Google, Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, Netflix, or whatnot, or whatever, right? So what you do is you get to put your money in, you get to own a piece of the companies. The companies get to get money from the public for free in returns. They are obligated by the SEC. The SEC was constructed in 1934 after the stock market crash of 29. We had the worst stock market crash ever, which in 1929, um, which led to the, the regulation of the industry via the SEC. So with that being said, the SEC, they require companies to show their earnings. Now, what this does is this opens up transparency with the public. So if a company wants money from the public, they have to be transparent with the public according to the SEC guidelines. Before the SEC came along, before 1929, what used to happen was when people purchased a stock or they made an investment into a company, they didn't know what happened. A person could take your money. A person could just steal your money. A person could just do whatever they want to do with your money and have no, um, you know, and just hope. A person did good with your money. So a, a long story short, the SEC has helped with that by creating what we know as the Security Exchange Commission, which is the governing body. Now, we kind of know what earnings are. And we kind of spoke about that, that governing body, which is the SEC. The SEC is the Security Exchange Commission. This is where people, companies have to turn their money into. Sometimes when you, they don't, they're the ones that make the rules and guidelines off of what publicly traded companies can do. Who they can take money from? What do they do with the money? Also, being transparent with the public. So you have different forms that are filed with the SEC that includes a company's earnings. For prime example, you have Form 10K, the two most popular one, probably only two, but and I guess there's some other ones I don't know about, but you have the 10K and the 10Q, often referred to as the 10, uh, 10 Quebec or the 10 Kilo. Some people say 10K, some people say 10Q, some people say 10 kilo. Sounds a little confusing, but it's not. 10K just means the annual report. Annually, what are you going to turn in? Uh, annually, an uh, annual report on the company, which you're going to give your balance sheets, income statements, and cash flow statements, right? That's what included inside of a 10K. Also, besides the finances, what they earn, you have to speak about the company. What I mean, what do you mean you have to speak about the company? You have to talk about the particular company. What is the company doing? What has the company done? any issues or problems um, that you have to talk about with a particular company, right? That could affect investors. So what's happening when you have a 10K or 10 kilo, what happens with a the earnings report, it gives investors a glimpse of what's going on underneath the hood of the company. So for prime example, we all know what the company Apple is. We know what products they make. They make our favorite iPhone, all of the great stuff like that. But how much money do they make? How much um, how much debt do they have? How much cash flow? Is the cash flow growing? Is the cash flow declining? Or is the cash flow flatlining? How, do they, how does their cash flow and money compare to their competitors like Microsoft? How does Pepsi compare to uh, Coca-Cola? The only way you see this is the earnings. And the thing about it is when you see the earnings report, it controls the market 
not as in control, but it has an effect on the market because it can make investors happy, which leads to a bull market, or it can make investors sad, which leads to a bear market. So a bull market is when the market goes up, a bear market is when the market goes down. So for prime example, when a company already has the EPS, earnings per share estimates. So for prime example, today is April 23rd of 2020. Companies like Coca-Cola for the rest of the year, they have projected their particular earnings. They're projected earnings to what they're gonna be in the first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter. Wall Street also make estimates on these companies. Every quarter, when these companies report their earnings, this is when you see, uh, not all the time, but sometimes you see drastic moves inside of the company. What I mean by you seeing drastic moves inside the company, you see drastic moves in the stock price, meaning investors get very happy, our investors get very sad. Why do investors get happy or sad? So we spoke about the EPS, the earnings per share, and we spoke about the estimates. The earnings that the company put out, did they beat the estimates of the investors? Or did, or were they, did they underperform the invest the or did they underperform the estimates of the investors? So those are two big things, beating the expectations of Wall Street guidelines analysts wall street you have particular people on wall street analysts they're called that follow wall street they get all the inside information they get all the good stuff and the juicy stuff and they predict what this company is going to do in the future now this could uh, differentiate between uh what's actually real and what they're estimating so for prime example let's say if you have a company like zoom zoom for example um it was a company it's seen a lot of activity due to the coronavirus take clorox bleach it has seen a lot of um, it has seen a lot of activity due to the coronavirus. So now you see the estimates that Google, not Google, but the estimates that Wall Street has made. Now they're, they're, um, the estimates are no longer valid because guess what? These companies have outperformed the stock market. So when they outperform, not outperform the stock market, but their earnings have outperformed Wall Street. So if their earnings outperform what Wall Street had estimated, that could be a good thing, send the stock, stock price to go up. Now on the same token, when companies lose money because of Wall Street, everything is tied to people making money. So if companies are not making money, that means that they are not hiring employees. If companies are losing money, then that means that they're not hiring and they might actually be laying off or furloughing exactly what we're seeing a lot of in the airline industry before the bailout. So when companies are not making money, that means that they could be stop hiring people. They could stop hiring people. They can start laying people off. And if they're, if they're not hiring people, if people don't have jobs, who's going to pay rent? Who's going to pay the lease? Who's going to pay the mortgages? Who's going to buy the car? Who's going to go to the movies if people don't have money? So that makes Wall Street sad. And when Wall Street gets sad, that stars us into what we know as a bear market when the market continues to go down, down, and down. Not so good, right? So we like to see the market go up. So when we see earnings, if anything affects earnings, earnings is the number one thing that drives everything on Wall Street. And it's everything that drives everything on everything that we do, right? It All of our investing. Wall Street is the backbone of our economy here in the United States of America, meaning that if if, the, if uh, the stock market is going down, that means business is going down. And when business is going down, that means that when business is going down, when the stock market is going down, that means that real estate could be going down because if business is going down, that means people don't have jobs. If business is going down, that means that earnings are slowing up. That means the stock market is going down. And if the stock market is going down, and people don't have jobs, then that means that real estate is probably going to go down. That means that business is going to hurt. And that's pretty much our economy, which is pretty much business, stocks, and things like that. So you have to be very careful of what are earnings, right? You have to be very careful of what are earnings and when do they come out. Now, we hit these things called earning season. We're going to get off into the earning season. Take a little sip of water here. My mouth is getting a little bit of dry here in the beautiful state of, beautiful city instead of Denver, Colorado, via ThinkTech, Hawaii. In Honolulu, Hawaii. So the thing about it we must think about now is now that earnings, um, we want to get into earnings season. What is earnings season and what does that mean? So let's take April 15th of 2020 all the way into May 15th of 2020 is considered earnings season. 
For prime example, right now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going through a pandemic that the world has never seen with the COVID-19, aka coronavirus crisis. So with that being said, it has crippled our economy. For prime example, nobody is flying. So the airline industry is being hit. Also, many restaurants have been forced to close. So when restaurants are forced to close, guess what? That's another hit to the restaurant industry. So you have, and the list just goes on with so many people that have been raveled to small businesses that have been raveled by our um, the COVID-19 crisis. So now we're walking into earnings season. We all know that companies been hit, but we don't know how bad they've been hit. For prime example, just yesterday, Delta released their uh, Q1 earnings. When I say Q1, that means quarter one. Quarter one, we have four quarters in the year. Quarter one is January, February, March. Quarter two is April, May, June. Quarter three is July, August, September. And fourth quarter is October, November, December. So about a month after the quarter, we get what we know as the 10K, 10Q reports. They are filed with the SEC. You can look up companies' filings on sec.gov. When you look these up, this way you're going to be able to see the latest 10Q report by Delta. If you read that report, Delta will tell you, hey, we received the five point over a $5 billion bailout via the CARES Act because of President Trump. And they also would detail to you what did they have to do to get that money, right? So the company, by them doing that, they had to pay uh, $1.6 billion back over 10 years for the first five years at 1%, for the second five years from 2020 all the way until 2025 is 1% they have to pay back. And from 2025 to 2030, they have to pay back um, two percent on the loan right and they have to pay you know 1.6 billion with about 1.5 billion interest back to the u.s government also with that yes the government lended us money but they also issue what we know as warrants warrants is something that gives which was a playbook out of warren buffett's book i'm pretty sure he's not the first person to do it but he was someone who was major that did it with bank of america back in 2008 now the department of treasury led by the fearless the Honorable uh, Stephen Munch, I think that's how you say his name, he issued warrants for, um, I can't remember the price. The price of the stock was twenty four thirty nine. I can't remember how many how many of it was warrants. But anyway, it's about six hundred. I don't want to I don't want to mislead anybody, so I'm not going to quote. It. I can't remember that report off the top of my head. But essentially, what happens is the government is saying, "Hey, we're going to lend you this money, but we're also going to be able to buy your stock for twenty four dollars and thirty nine cent." For the next five years what does that mean that means that right now delta stock is trading for 22 dollars. that means that if delta stock shoots up to 30 40 50 dollars the government can go in and purchase millions of delta shares for 24 dollars and 39 cent which could be a great return on an investment for investors right so now the downside to this is if delta does not hit the 24 dollar mark then that means that the government doesn't have to buy the stock. It's not obligated that it has to do it. It's just that the government is pretty much, the government has pretty much brought a call option on Delta. <laughs> when you really look at it, it pretty much brought a call option for five years for twenty four thirty nine on Delta. So when you see that uh, type of information, you know, that's great information that comes out via earnings season. So now you're going to have the airlines, American Airlines, Southwest Airlines, JetBlue. These are all information that's going to come out via doing earnings season. So now we're going to see, we all know what the COVID-19 did, but we don't know how it has really affected. Has it hurt Amazon or has Amazon grew during the season? Has it hurt Apple or has Amazon, Apple grew? How much has Zoom really grown? How much have Facebook really grown during this time frame? What about YouTube and Google? Have they seen an increase in activity? I think Facebook definitely is winning. Um, Home Depot is definitely winning. All these companies are winning because of this, but we can't say because we don't know what their books look like. So every quarter, we have the rare opportunity to look at the books of the particular company. And also every year, we get an annual report, the 10K, to see the inside of the finances. This is what investors look for, but the greatest investor of all time, Mr. Warren Buffett. This is what they look for, right? So, and what I mean by they look for, they look to read the reports. They look at the numbers. So many times, a lot of us read Yahoo Finance, shout out to Yahoo Finance, CNBC. These are great people. But a lot of times we become very dependent upon what do they have to say. And what I mean by becoming very dependent upon, we don't know how to look up the information ourselves. So I have a step-by-step -step video on my YouTube channel that tells you at the Investor Show 
It shows you exactly how to go to sec.gov to go up on the company's filings, search for a particular company's name, and to look up their 10Q and 10, um, 10Q and 10K reports, the annual and their quarterly reports. And it's the season. Every quarter, we just finished up our first quarter um, from January, February, and March. We just finished up our first quarter of 2020. Now, companies have to report. All these publicly traded companies now have to report their finances. They have to report their cash flow, their balance sheet, and they have to report their income statements. So these are all statements that are being wrapped up and being served to the public people. So now you can see why this can make investors sad, happy, or whatnot, or whatever the case may be. We know it's going to be bad. 25 million Americans filed jobless claims in the last four weeks. We have companies uh, receiving bailouts. The airline industry received a bailout. We have $5 billion set aside and another $434 billion that was set aside for small businesses. So we know people are hurting because a lot of companies and businesses are not um, open. Now it's becoming this political struggle of when they're going to open up the economy. So this is when we're starting to look at what's going to happen, right? So this is why we see a massive move in the stock market volatility. Volatility means going up and down via earnings season. So it will behoove you as a seasoned investor to look over some of these reports, read some of these reports. How much money is the company making? How much, my company, how much money is the company losing? And also you get the insight of the company as they tell you what is the financial wealth of their particular company. This is what makes you a better investor. There was a time when I only used to look at the price. I only used to look at the chart. And I used to only look at the dividends in the name of the company and maybe read a couple uh, articles that I saw floating around and I thought that was investing. I didn't know how to look up a balance sheet. And when I finally did discover a balance sheet, I didn't know what none of the crap meant. Then I started to look up an income statement. I didn't know what any of that meant, right? So now I'm teaching you guys and girls how to become more seasoned and better, how to look up financial reports. The same questions you would ask a friend to ask you to borrow money. If you had a friend to ask you to borrow money, what would you say? You, want, you would want to know how much money do they make. You would want to know, um, did they lose their income? Is their income is in, is their income in threat? What is their history? You can look at the credit score. And what about you? How, you, how can you judge a corporate company by their credit score? Look at their bond rating. So for prime example, Delta is hitting some very hard times. In return, Delta has done what? Delta is now issuing bonds at 7% interest. What does that mean, Prince Dykes? That means that Delta is now issuing bonds at 7% interest. That means that companies, um, as your credit, the lower your credit score, the more interest you have to pay. So they're going into the category of, hey, now we're willing to issue debt. That means a company saying, hey, let me borrow $1,000 and I give you back 7% over the next two, three, four years or whatever the maturity may be. These are ways, these are what companies do to um, raise money during hard times. So now you're noticing that what's happening. And now uh, Delta, who haven't made money, I won't say haven't made money, but who has seen a significant drop, airlines in general, has seen a significant drop in people traveling, guess what happens? Now, people are wondering, can you pay back your bonds? So now the credit score, their credit score drops. When their credit score drops, that means the interest rates on their loans go up. So those are key things, those are key indicators that you must look at when you're watching a particular stock. And you only can find these things out via earnings season. Now, some people can speculate and guess and all of the good stuff like that, but you have the rare opportunity to be able to look at into a company, you can look under the hood of a company every quarter or every year. Pretty cool, right? So it will behoove you to figure out how to read particular companies, right? How to look up the 10K at cc.gov. The 10K, that's the annual report. You can start by looking up 2019 annual report on any company. This quarter, starting from April 15th all the way to May 15th, you're going to see quarterly reports come out, 10Q filings, and you're going to see stocks make massive moves, massive moves to the upside, downside, which can actually drag the market with it. So we, we spoke about what are earnings, why they're important, how to look them up, and most importantly, what do they mean and how do they affect the stock market. So I hope you got some out of this episode. Um, happy investing. I want to say thank you for tuning in today. That's going to conclude today's episode on how earnings affect the stock market. We are now entering into earnings season, and we probably will see more volatility into the market that we've never probably have, that we haven't seen already with the pandemic crisis. So, thank you guys and girls for tuning in. I hope you guys are away from this. 
And until the next video, podcast, cartoon, or whatever else crazy you see me do around the globe, peace, be safe, I'm out, and thank you. Thank you.